And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things. For I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Lady in Waiting. Jean Collins' feelings didn't match the day at all. It was spring in San Francisco, and the city had a way of catching the spirit of such occasions. Jean entered a substantial-looking office building, paused near a flight of stairs, her eyes examining the directory, until they came to rest on John Bradley, attorney at law, room 208. Jean went up the stairs, forcing herself, determined to keep the appointment, even though she was more afraid than ever. When she opened the door, the secretary ushered her into Bradley's office. Oh, hello. You're Miss Jean Collins. Yes, I called. Yes, of I... course. Sit down, Miss Collins. Thank you. You uh, seem nervous. Is there something? It's just that I'm not sure you can help me, Mr. Bradley, and no one else knows what I'm about to tell and you. And no one else will. Whether I handle the case or not. That make it easier? Yes, not. Well, it's quite simple, in a way, the facts, I mean. You see, I was keeping company with someone a number of months ago. At the time, I thought he was a very fine man. Go on. I wasn't in love with him, but he was kind and thoughtful and in love with me. I only tell you that so you understand. I do understand. Well, anyway, he wanted me to marry him. He said we'd go away, travel around the world for a few years. He kept talking about that. I'm afraid that waiting for me to give him an answer is what kept me here. Well, the case isn't too unusual yet, Miss Thomas. I haven't told you his name. It's Frank Hodgson. Hodgson? Not the one... Yes. Believe me, I didn't know any more about that part of his life than anyone else. He never told me. And to meet him, Mr. Bradley, you'd never guess. He was a perfect gentleman. I'd never met anyone who... He got 20 years, didn't he? Yes. I remember reading about it. Quite a list of charges. You doubt his guilt, is that it? Want me to... No, Mr. Bradley, that isn't it. I'm glad. The evidence against him at the trial was pretty conclusive. Yes, I know. I want you to do something else. Maybe you won't be able to, I'm not sure. Frank might be stubborn about it. Have you seen him? No, he refused to see me. My name never came up as far as the rest of the world knows. I never even knew him. Mm -hmm. Then your problem? Every month, in the mailbox at my apartment, I find an envelope filled with currency. Well, that's your problem? You don't understand. I know that somehow Frank Hardison is sending that money. I want it stopped. I haven't touched the cent of it. I don't want to. But I thought if a lawyer talked to him, explained to Frank that he's really doing me more harm than good. Uh, you see, I... I have a rather responsible position, Mr. Bradley, and the people I work with ever thought... Of course. Thought... Why don't you go home and forget it, Miss Collins? I'll handle it. I'll drive up and see Hardison tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, when will I know? I'll be terribly anxious... Could you meet me here about 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon? Oh, no, I'm sorry. You see, I'm with a publicity concern, Mr. Bradley. We uh, have an important meeting with client tomorrow afternoon. Well, then why not meet me after hours? The Blue Star Cocktail Lounge, 6 o'clock. All right. And 
I'll have all the answers for you. I hope so. It's easier now, isn't it, Jean? Now that your problem is being shared. And somehow you feel a sense of confidence in attorney John Bradley. Riding home in a cab, you hope that it will go as simply as Bradley seems to anticipate. In front of the Oxford Arms, you're suddenly aware that the cab has stopped. That the Oxford Arms doorman is smiling at you, waiting for you to step out. <coughs> you with us, Miss G? What? Oh, <laughs> sorry, Dan. Dreaming again. Here you are, driver. Thank you, Miss. Ah, it's a fine spring day like this, Miss Jean. You should leave that desk of yours and get outside. <laughs> Go for a walk through Golden Gate Park. <laughs> Nothing like being outdoors. Dan, you're wonderful. <laughs> How are you feeling? Man, it's spring. No, I, I mean really. Oh, no. I'm all right. I'm, I'm fine, fine. You think you should work like this, Dan? Well, it's outdoors. Doctor says that's where I ought to be. <laughs> All right. Just worried about you. You know, this would be more like you, Miss Jean. The way you looked and acted the past few days, I guess you've got things on your own mind. Then they should be more like you. You notice that? <laughs> now, it's just a business worry, Dan. And I think it'll be all cleared up by tomorrow evening. Toast to Miss Collins, to no more worries and an uninhibited future. Oh, Mr. Bradley, I'm so glad it went that way. You're not drinking. Oh, well, I really don't feel like it. I'm just happy that Frank didn't give you any trouble, but he understood. Oh, he did, perfectly. And you're right, Frank Hardison seems like a nice guy. Yes, it's hard to believe you could have done all those other things. Oh, I don't know. In my line, you should discover that most people have many different sides. Well, let's talk about you. You still have a problem. Oh? Mm-hmm, yourself. Why, you've been brooding about all this. Can I help you to get it somewhere? Huh? Oh, good start. Might be a steak dinner at Rocco's Castle. You can look down at the city and tell it that Dean Collins isn't going to worry anymore about anything. I shouldn't. You should. Is this a service you provide for all your clients, Mr. Bradley? No. You pay for it if you like. I'll be your first charity. What do you mean? All that money that's accumulated. Hardison doesn't want it back. He hasn't much use for it where he is. He suggests that you deduct my fee and give the rest to your favorite charity. Oh? And my fee includes a steak dinner. Fair enough? Then I'll drive you straight home. All right. Fair enough, Mr. Daddy. There you are, Jean, right to the door. Mr. Bradley, you've been so wonderful. John. Oh, John. You've been very kind. I do appreciate it. You're a favorite lawyer, huh? Absolutely. Well, it's all right. You don't have to come up. The doorman's still on duty. Can I see you soon? Well, I don't know. I... Jean. Yes? Get in trouble again right away, will you? I'll handle it. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Good night. I'll try. Good night. Well, evening, Miss Jean. Hello, Dan. <laughs> well, 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 the spring days kept alive into the night. <laughs> You're happy, Miss Jean. Yes. <laughs> Good night, Dan. <coughs> oh, wait a minute. Did you get something, Miss Jean? No. Dan. Yes? And Dan, I don't want you to think I'm poking my nose into other people's business, but let me ask you something. Tell me. You're not really very well, are you, Dan? Oh, no, please. No. I, I, I just want to know, if you had some money, quite a bit of money, is there any doctor that could help you? <laughs> Miss Jean, they should be more like you. Man, I'll not forget this. Tell me, Dan. I'll tell you this. A long time ago, I had all the care of the man to die. I'll tell you. 
just standing by the door now, waiting my turn. Oh, me. Forget you, see. Only, I won't ever forget you. Good night, dear. In the days that follow, you see more and more of John Bradley, don't you, Jim? There are evenings at the theater, dancing, dining at the smart clubs down the peninsula. And you find yourself becoming extremely fond of him. You look forward to each meeting with increasing interest. Then one evening you say goodnight to John in the lobby of your apartment building. Go upstairs. As you're about to open your apartment door... Just a minute, Jeannie. Oh, I'm going in with you. Here, Skip here. it, huh? Inside. Oh. And don't holler. I'm your favorite charity. Where did you... One of the boys was up to see Frank Hardison a few days ago. Frank told him you hadn't spent any of the money he sent you. You were going to give it to your favorite charity, Miss Collins. Uh, hmm? What do you want? Oh, we'll, uh, we'll start off with you getting your checkbook. checkbook. Write out the full amount of Frankie Hardison's little donation. But... You didn't know it, but I was a partner of Frankie's team. I don't like the way he's running our business, so I'm changing things a little. First, the check. You can't ask me to... I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. I'll tell you something else. You better forget your boyfriend. John Bradley. He's out, crossed off your books. You mustn't see him anymore. He's done nothing. Not yet, but he's a lawyer. I don't like lawyers. I like to hang around them. Well, thanks, girl. Thanks, girl. Yeah, yeah, he's been for 20 years. I know. <laughs> so you're a, a lady in waiting. Anyway, that's how it is. The only way that's safe for me. I tell you, Mr. Stark. Joey Stark. Like I said, I'm telling you, no more lawyer. No more doing things any way but mine. I'll go to the police. You go no place. If you do, when I can't get back to you, <laughs> then your friend uh, John Bradley will have to be taking care of you. Look at you. Yeah, here, Jeannie. My pen. You can write that check out now to your favorite charity, Joey Stark. For nine consecutive years now, Signal Oil Company has been sponsoring the Whistler. That's a long time for a radio program, yet short compared with the 21 years Signal has served the West. However, just as the Whistler has grown to be the most popular West Coast program in radio history, Signal has grown too, grown from a small start in Southern California into an organization now serving seven Pacific Coast states from Canada to Mexico. Now, obviously, there must be good reasons why so many motorists have switched to Signal gasoline. And there are. There's the good mileage which has made Signal famous as the go-farther gasoline. There's the way Signal delivers that good mileage. By helping your engine run so efficiently, you save gasoline. Save with quick starting. Save with smooth pickup, free of balking and hesitation. Save with full power that gets you into high gear fast, helps you stay there with a minimum of shifting on hills or in traffic. But for the full story behind the growing switch to signal, there's just one way to find out, an easy way, a quick way. Try, just try, one tank full of the famous go-farther gasoline. How about it? in an instant, didn't it, Jean? The hope for a bright, clean future. It disappeared when your past association with Frank Hardison came calling again. This time in the person of Joey Stark. Joey, who says he was Frank Hardison's partner, won't believe that you didn't know what was going on. Had no knowledge of the sort of deals that sent Frank to prison for 20 years. More than that, Joey Stark made you give him a check for all the money Frank Hardison sent you. And he insists that you stop seeing John Bradley. Joey's afraid of lawyers. 
afraid of anything that might put him where Frank is. So desperately afraid that he'd commit murder. You know that. That's why for the next three days you refuse to see John Bradley. You leave words you won't talk to him even on the telephone. Yes? Miss Jean, this is Dan downstairs. He's calling me again, that Mr. Bradley. He won't take no for an answer. Well, he'll have to. I can't talk to him. The terrible part is the realization that you love John Bradley, isn't it, Jean? That you don't want to give him up. Later, as you leave the apartment, you find something else. A note downstairs in the mailbox. Orders from Mr. Joey Stark to meet him tonight. You hurry downtown to your office. Oh, Miss Collins. Yes, Jimmy? A client to see you, Miss Collins. He's waiting in your office. A client? I wasn't expecting it. No? Well, gosh, he said he'd talk to you. Insisted on going right in. Hmm, I can't remember him. Well, thanks, Jimmy. I'll go see. Hello, Jean. John, you shouldn't have come here. I'm staying right here until you talk to me. Until you tell me what's wrong. Close the door. But... It's nothing, John. Why have you refused to see me? Why aren't you in when I call? John, I... You even have the doorman at your apartment making excuses when I know he's lying. Jean, if it's something I've done... No. No, you you haven't done anything. Then who has? What's it all about? John, if I tell you, if I give you the real reason, will you go away? Promise me. Tell me, Jean. Hey, I'm the guy that said get in trouble, remember? Your favorite lawyer? Come on. Well, someone called on me. A man I never saw before. He said he was Frank Hardison's partner. Oh? He wouldn't believe I don't know about Frank. He won't trust me. I didn't want you mixed up in it anymore. It's no use. I should have known about Frank. Could have found out long ago. Who is this man, Jean? Where is he? His name is Joey Stark. That's all I can tell you. He sent word for me to meet him tonight. No, you're not. Oh, but I am. I have to. No. No, I'll meet him. Oh, you can't. He'd kill you. He said so. Let me handle it. Maybe it's just a bluff. No. I'll talk to him like I did with Frank. Please, Jean, I'll be careful. Tell me where you were supposed to meet him. There's a very demanding note. Mm -hmm. Have it in my purse. It's all there. Hotel on Ellis Street. When you get through here, go home. Wait for me to call. Don't open the door or talk to anyone. John, please, will you be I'll care? handle it. Just wait until I call. The waiting isn't easy, is it, Jim? Not when you realize what might happen. The afternoon at the office drags on, almost endlessly. You catch a hurried dinner on the way home, scarcely touching the food. Then home, to an apartment that seems to turn into a prison cell. You pace it, nervously, retracing your steps, staring at the telephone. About nine o'clock, it's almost too much to bear any longer. And then... Yes? John, are you all right? There's nothing to worry about. Did you go to his hotel? Yes. You saw him? Yes, Jean. We'd better not talk anymore on the phone. Can you come over? I don't think I should. John, is everything all right? There's nothing to worry about. I'll come by in the morning before you go to work. <laughs> Please, Jean, it's best that way. And in the meantime... Yes? No matter what you might hear, remember, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing at all. Not now. <laughs> As the receiver clicks in your ear, you wonder what he means by not now. But there's no use trying to guess, Jean. Nothing to do but wait until morning. You spend an almost sleepless night and then rush to the door to greet him as the buzzer sounds. Oh, John, I've been so... Who are you? Lieutenant Williams, homicide. I'm Ms. Sergeant Lacey. May we step in, Miss Collins? Homicide? I don't understand there's some things we don't understand, Miss Cullen. Can we talk it over? Mm -hmm. Sit down. Ah, it won't be necessary. I'll come right to the point, Miss Cullen. Did you write this check to Joey Stark? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. What did you say? We found it on the body of Joey Stark. 
And the body? That's right. He was found late last night, brought into the morgue. Took a little while to look you up, but naturally we're interested in learning the connection between you and this man. That's uh, quite a sum. Oh, please, I don't know anything about it. I, Of course, I, I wrote the check, but I... For what? Did you go to Joey Stark's hotel at any time last night? No. You didn't leave your apartment here, I suppose. No, I didn't go there. I tell you, I, I was supposed to, but something happened. I changed my mind. Uh, Lacey. Yeah? The doorman on duty. Get him and bring him up here. Check. We'll see if he's got a memory. Now, uh, Miss Collins, why don't you tell me what it's all about? Blackmail set up? No. I, I tell you, I... Oh. Oh. Uh, expecting somebody? Uh, no. Uh, whoever it is, I'll send them away. I'll... Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't do that, Miss Collins. We'll both see who it is. Oh, quite insistent. Now, go ahead. Open the door. John, I can't see you now. You can drag me to the office some other time. <laughs> Johnny Brad, Lieutenant Williams. You really? lost little time in calling a lawyer, Miss Collins. A good one, too. Real come of this boy. Come on in. Gene, how long has he been here? What have you told him? I work fast, Bradley. You know that. You told me all I want to know. Namely, that this is her check. Check? Well, what about it? John, they found it on Joey Stark's body. <laughs> Hey, you folks talk real familiar about Joey Stark. You know him too, Bradley? Maybe. Why shouldn't he have Miss Collins check? She gave it to him as a favor for somebody. Really? Who? What difference does it make? None. If she didn't leave this apartment last night, and we'll know that in a minute. Uh, did you find that doorman, Lacey? Yes, sir. Uh, in here, Dan. <coughs> what is all this? Miss Jean, is there something... I'll ask the questions, if you don't mind, Dan. We're trying to find out if Miss Collins went to a certain address last night. It's uh, to her advantage for you to tell the truth. Certainly. Did you notice her leave the building around 9 o'clock, like she said? I... I'm asking him, Miss Collins. Well, did she? Well, Miss Collins never left the building at all last night. I work very late, and I've seen her. That satisfy you, William? Oh, I, I'm not trying to fasten this thing on anyone, Bradley. I just want the truth. Dan just told you. Well, Miss Collins, if I don't doubt you and your uh, witness, I think a jury might. What do you mean? Dan Rogers here. I have a very good memory. Let me see. Convicted of perjury in 1929, weren't you, Dan? What? Parole for good behavior. Brought back on the same charge in 1932. Served five years. A nice, reliable witness. And riding up here in the elevator, he tells me what a kind young lady Miss Collins is. Offered him money for medical care. Well, you just sound prejudiced enough, Mr. Bradley. What are you going to do? Same thing you do in my position. I'm arresting your client, Miss Collins, for murder. Now, wait a minute. John, don't. You've got your murderer, William. But it isn't Miss Collins. I did it. Why? You heard me, I did it. I killed him. If you don't believe it, pick up the cab driver who drove me over there last night. Out of all the cabs in San Francisco... His number is 4211. I made a note of it. Get him. He'll remember me. We had trouble finding Stark's address. You know what this means, Bradley? I know what it means. A baby has a way of letting you know when it's time to change. Too bad your car hasn't a way of letting you know when it's time to change oil. Chances are most cars would be saying right now. Time to drain out old sludgy worn out winter oil. Time to change to Signal Premium. Signal Premium. Heavy duty Signal Premium. Now there's the oil that really protects your car. This proved and improved heavy-duty signal oil does more, much more than just lubricate. In addition, signal premium motor oil cools, cleans, cushions, seals, and protects. Result? Tests under all types of driving conditions prove new signal premium motor oil reduces engine wear 50%. Your engine keeps its like new pep and power twice as long. So since it's time to change, this time give your car a change for the better. Change to new heavy-duty Signal Premium Motor Oil at a Signal Station, where you see that sign outside. Time to change. Time to change.
It's happened, hasn't it, Jean? All that you feared from that very first day when you decided that someone might be able to help you in your problem with Frank Hardison. And there's nothing you can do. It's too late. It was too late the moment you let John Bradley talk you into breaking that appointment with Joey Stark. You're sure that John went there, murdered Stark for you, admitted it to Lieutenant Williams to save you. And now they're about to prove his story. Less than an hour later, as you all wait in your apartment, they have the cab driver who took John Bradley to Stark's hotel. One glance, and he makes the identification. Yep, I drove him to the hotel uh, about uh, 9 p.m. That's right. Oh, John, why didn't you let him Did stay? you wait while he went up to Stark's room, driver? Nope. He went up, though. I uh, saw him walk through the lobby and start up the stairs. I uh, picked up another fare and drove off. I see. That all, Lieutenant? Uh, yeah, you can go. You're too damn. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? My other fare. The fare I brought back. It was him. Damn it. Sure, the old man here. He come walking out of the hotel as Mr. Bradley went in. Passed him. How about it, Dan? I never forget a face, Lieutenant. So that's it, Bradley. Stark was dead when you got there, wasn't he? You lied because you thought that Miss Collins... Yes. Was... Yes, that's the way it was. Want to argue the point, Dan? No, it wouldn't do much good, I guess. Dan, you killed him. Why? Wait a minute, Jean. He shouldn't talk in front of the police. Dan, let me handle it. Oh, don't worry about it, son. <laughs> They put me on trial. The jury did not stay out too long. Dan, <coughs> tell me. Why, how did you even know about Joey Stark? Oh, I knew about a lot of things, Miss Jean, and it wasn't just for you. It was for Frank. Frank? Mm-hmm. <coughs> Frank Hardison put me on that door downstairs the day you moved in here. I left the envelope to the money, stopped leaving them, whatever Frank said. Dan, you once said that someone else paid some medical expenses for you. Was it Frank Hardison? Yes, Miss Jean, it was Frank. So that's why you... This, uh, Joey Stark was no friend of Frank's. He was just a cheap hoodlum, blackmailing Miss Jean. But, Dan, to kill a man just to pay It wasn't a... only that, Mr. Bradley. The lieutenant will be able to show you when he checks on all those aliases of mine. You'll find one of them was Hardison. You see, Frank Hardison is my boy. He asked me to protect Miss Jean. She was the only fine thing that ever happened to her. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving. If you drive at sensible speeds, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances, you may even save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Mary Jane Croft, John Stevenson, Jack Moyle, Victor Rodman, Ed Mack, and Vern Surrey. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Joel Malone, music by Wilbur Hess, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at this same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.